Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our final webinar series during the All That Glows event here at the Binkson Center. We're glad that you guys all registered and are joining us, and I see questions coming in. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Meredith. I am one of the aesthetic experts at the Binkson Center. Um, I'm a physician assistant, and I perform um, injectables and um, non-surgical technologies, laser, um, with us tonight, we also have Ashley, one of our master injectors. You'll see her on the side as Ashley Behaps master injector. She's going to be answering your questions as well this evening. So tonight is meant to be completely interactive. I'm here with a Diet Coke and um, a few little props to show you guys, but you have been so gracious to um, send in your photos and questions, and we are going to do our best to answer those this evening. So, um, Tonight is focused on injectables. So injectables would be that category of wrinkle relaxers and fillers. So within the wrinkle relaxer category, we actually have several FDA cleared wrinkle relaxers. Um, these are used cosmetically in the face to soften dynamic lines. So the, the 11s that form when you furrow or the lines that form when you raise your forehead, et cetera. So the most kind of popular um, kind of name you've probably heard is Botox Cosmetic. So we carry Botox Cosmetic. This has been around for a long time and actually um, started as a medical use and we found some great cosmetic side effects and then it started being used in the face. So we love Botox Cosmetic. We also carry Dysport. Dysport is very similar to Botox. It's just made by a different manufacturer or Galderma. So Dysport does the same thing, softens um, dynamic lines. Two other wrinkle relaxers that you may or may have not heard of are Xeomin and Javo. Again, all four of these wrinkle relaxers are more similar than they are different, but we have the luxury of carrying all four here at the Bingston Center. So we like to kind of curate the perfect wrinkle re relaxer um, for you and your look. So typical units, I know Ashley is running through a few of those questions, is really going to vary on you and your goal. I said to a patient the other day, it's kind of like, I drive a convertible and you drive an SUV. So we need different amounts of gas in our car, right? And maybe different kinds of gas to get us there. So we basically will look at your face and how strong your muscles are moving and how where your muscles are moving, how strong they are. And we will recommend a dose of wrinkle relaxer to soften or put that muscle in a temporary timeout. Our goal would be to get as close to the bullseye as we can without over treating you. Because with wrinkle relaxers, we can't reverse the effect of the wrinkle relaxer. It simply runs its course and after about three months or so, it's just metabolized and gone. So like Cinderella at the ball, at midnight it's gone. That's kind of how a wrinkle relaxer works. I'd say the most common areas that we use wrinkle relaxers would be between the brows for your classic 11 lines, forehead to soften um, the lines caused by dynamic raising of the brows. Crow's feet is very popular. Some fun um, areas that we use Botox that are a little more off-label but very effective would be for the masseters, for grinding the teeth. Um, we also use it in the chin, um, above the lip for a gummy smile, um, sometimes in the bunny lines here, and then in platysmal bands on the neck. So those are just a few to name several of the locations we use wrinkle relaxers. Um, so wrinkle relaxers fit in this category. Second category is fillers. Fillers are so much fun because they're instant gratification. And fillers are made of um, hyaluronic acid, at least the fillers that we carry here at the Bingston Center. What a hyaluronic acid filler um, means is that um, this filler is meant to replace volume. Uh, hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring substance found in basically every cell of our body but we lose this over time. So you'll see this manifested in kind of deflated um, mid face, maybe a more dehydrated looking lip, et cetera. And so you may notice that as you watch commercials and use your products, they all say hyaluronic acid, HA. And that's because it's meant to hydrate. So uh, the HA we use for a filler is just a bigger molecule and we will pick uh, the filler for the job. We have several uh, fillers in our and our platform here. Um, and they, they're more, again, they're more similar than they are different in that they're all made of hyaluronic acid. But the way that recipe or that cake has been baked um, is slightly different. So 
we may pick a filler that's very soft, light, and fluffy for the lip, whereas we pick a filler that has a little more lifting capacity kind of for the mid face. Okay, so don't feel pressure to know what filler you need when you come visit us. We get questions all the time um, about, you know, do I, how do I know what and how much I need? And when you have an interior decorator come to your house, you say what mood you're looking to achieve. You don't tell them what paint color you want. And that's our job to educate you as a patient as to what product we think would help um, meet your needs. Botox and, and wrinkle relaxers typically last about three to four months. Fillers are fun in the fact that they last up to two years. Okay, so this is not something that you have to come in and kind of get fluffed up every few months. No, this is a lasting treatment. Um, and the hyaluronic acid just gradually dissipates over time. So you don't wake up one day and lights out, you're deflated. This is, it's very subtle. So the um, wrinkle relaxers tend to be kind of that metronome that keeps us in touch. And then the fillers are, are what we kind of strum in from time to time. So they last a lot longer um, and they're placed all over the face. Um, and we have different techniques to do that safely. Um, Fillers are also reversible. So when you use a hyaluronic acid filler, we actually have an enzyme right here in the office um, that we can, an antidote, or we can reverse the filler. So this helps us uh, feel confident from a safety perspective that we're keeping you safe, but also um, from a patient perspective, sometimes you wanna know that something can be reversed. So you can be assured of that. Um, as far as units and, and syringes, that gets kind of confusing for a patient. So whereas we need enough gas in the tank to get us to where we're gonna go with Botox, so to speak, we need enough volume to achieve our optimal outcome with, with a filler. And um, I brought with me a, a syringe of filler just so you can see what that would look like. This is Juvederm Ultra Plus. So um, this is a filler made by Allergan. And uh, each syringe of filler is kind of in a sterile pack like this. And the crazy thing is, Every syringe of filler, although that sounds like a lot, it's just a fifth of a teaspoon. So this is what a syringe of filler looks like. It's one ml total. There's some lidocaine in here as well. So that helps for numbing and comfort during a procedure. It's not that painful. We'll, we'll use some comfort measures, but this in itself has some numbing in it. And I want to show you guys what the gel looks like. So Every gel that's expelled from different filler is going to kind of look different. But this is a rather firm filler that we often use for marionette lines, nasolabial folds. And if you see it, it's just like clear drops of gel. Okay. So I'm going to just show you guys what that looks like. Okay. This particular filler is water loving. So the way these molecules are cross-linked are in a way that water is drawn to it. So that's helpful in areas that maybe we want to add some more volume. So this is the filler. It literally feels like gel. And when we place this in your face, we're very, very careful. We treat this like, like an implant in the sense that we know this is going to last several months in the face. So we're going to prepare the skin in the face for for that event that means a sterile cleanse and some post treatment instructions um, to keep you keep you really safe with any injection you can expect some swelling and bruising we anticipate that if we get away with not having swelling or bruising we just say you know that was a good day but as far as a social calendar goes i never want to ruin anybody's weekend so planning appropriately um, to anticipate maybe some swelling or bruising is helpful i will say that these masks have been super helpful because they cover most of the areas that we're injecting, especially the lips. We've seen a huge uptick in the amount of lip injections we've done as a practice. And I think that's interesting since they're all lips are covered, but our, our camouflage is here. So um, filler in Botox and wrinkle relaxers really should keep you looking hydrated and fresh. Um, they should not leave you looking done. So if you're seeing the filler, if you're seeing a frozen face, that's really not an ideal outcome from our perspective. Really with appropriate Botox, wrinkle relaxer and filler, your skin should look great. Maybe someone should ask you if you've lost a few pounds, you know, what you're doing differently. So I feel like the biggest hurdle to jump when you're getting into this pool of wrinkle relaxers and filler is to understand that the goal is to not look like you've had anything done. Um, to look refreshed, to have your, get a little chemical brow lift, to get that light reflex back where it belongs. It's more of a restored look. So 
that just takes a lot of trust and we understand that. So that's why we take a lot of time just talking about our rationale for why we're using what we're using, why we're placing it where we're placing it, um, why we're picking a specific technique. Because um, once you're on board, we really love to get you that optimal outcome and um, get you feeling more like yourself again. So this can range anywhere from someone in their 30s who's maybe just had kids and feels tired and kind of depleted, all the way up to someone maybe in their 60s who's just lost fat. I mean, this is just kind of a fact of life in the science of aging. Men and women both age very similarly. Um, the way we inject is a little bit different, but um, we do use wrinkle relaxers and fillers on men, women, ages, you know, 20 all the way, all the way up. So I'm going to look through some questions here and, and see, um, what are kind of your biggest hangups or questions about fillers or Botox, you guys. Sometimes if you've had a, um, a bad experience with Botox, maybe you, you know, had some dosing that was a little bit off or some filler that didn't turn off well, out well, that can, um, that can be really hard to kind of try again. Um, and we understand that. And so we will kind of work with you with your history, try to understand um, what the experience has been, and then readjust for the future. We've also, um, we also offer um, dissolving of filler. So let's say you've had filler done and it just didn't turn out well. We dissolve filler a lot. And so that is, again, just kind of the start of rebuilding a new relationship, starting fresh, and um, something we do all the time here. So um, Xeomin, that's a great question. So Xeomin is a wrinkle relaxer, preservative-free. Basically, Xeomin um, doesn't have any accessory proteins connected with the wrinkle relaxer, the molecule itself. Um, every company that makes a wrinkle relaxer or filler has to have their own proprietary method of doing this. So I call Xeomin like the hippie Botox or granola Botox because it is preservative free. Sometimes we use Xeomin for people that um, maybe haven't had a great response with another wrinkle relaxer. I still think of them more like Coke and Pepsi, more similar than they are different. But again, it's really great to have, um, have some options. Um, I'm going to look through a few more questions here. Alrighty. Is everybody hearing and seeing this okay? Can you guys give me a thumbs up? Okay. Um, great. Thank you. Can you have a reaction to Botox if you have used it in the past? Um, adverse reactions with Botox are really actually extremely rare, um, including non-responders with Botox. That's very rare. More commonly, we see that it's more of an issue of the amount of dosing that was used um, and the placement of the wrinkle relaxer. So I would say let it run its course, give it its full three, four months, and then try again. Let your provider know that you didn't have the best experience. If I ask a patient, hey, have you tried Botox in the past or Dysport in the past? And they say, yes, I follow that question up with, did you like the result? It's interesting what you hear because not everybody has had a great result or um, experience, and that's typically because of the way it was used. Oh, hi, Rejuve. <laughs> good, to, good to see you guys. Okay. Um, so filler is really fun. The expectation with filler should be as far as quantities, because we're talking about planning. Um, if I'm doing a full face restoration for filler, I am planning multiple syringes. Sometimes that is um, a little off-putting because it sounds like that's a lot. What you need to ask your provider is what their ideal outcome would be. So if I tell you my optimal goal for you is to look refreshed, like you took an 18 hour nap and that your skin looks great. And then I follow up by telling you I need five syringes of filler to do that. Then you understand my aesthetic perspective. If my aesthetic perspective is for you to look done, for your lips to look huge, for your cheeks to look chiseled, and then I tell you you need four to five syringes, well then you understand my aesthetic perspective. So. Because, just because you need are are recommended to have three, four syringes of filler, it does not necessarily mean that you're going to be looking done. If you've had nothing done and you've had a lot of volume loss to the mid face, you're going to be using at least two syringes of filler minimum. For a lip, maybe you'd use one or a half, but definitely um, more filler does not need to look more done. Okay, so when you think of a syringe, 
just I want you guys to remember that's a fifth of a teaspoon and based on the placement of the filler, um, you may need to use more than one syringe of filler to get started. Patients may often then say, well, how about I just start with one syringe and see, see how that looks. I can always add more. That is true. I think that's especially true for lower face filler. However, when we're looking for mid-face volume correction, sometimes one syringe of filler just is kind of a disappointing outcome because it just simply isn't enough filler. So trust your provider, know their aesthetic perspective, um, and, and go from there. The most common mid-face volume correctors that we use are Juvederm Voluma and Restylane Lift. The reason why we tend to go towards those fillers are because they have the highest lift capacity. Okay, so that, that's the kid for the job in this, in this scenario. They're going to lift the tissue. They're going to look natural. It's basically putting things back where they belong. On the other hand, if we're, if we're treating a lip or fine lines, we're going to choose a filler that's soft and flexible. You know, something like a Restylane and Refine or Kiss have been really helpful. If you want something that draws a lot of water to itself and to kind of fill up a space, you're going to use something like a Juvederm Ultra or Ultra Plus. Okay? Um, if a client is interested in filler, um, but just started an antibiotic for an infection, I love that question. So preparation is key. If you have any active infection, um, including a cold sore, we ask that you not receive a filler. Again, filler is like an implant. We want to treat it as such. So we would ask um, that you'd be clear of any infection, um, any sinus infection. It includes even sinus irritation before doing your filler. Again, filler is fun, but it is not an emergency. So we really want you in optimal health. Um, if you have any dental work coming up, we really like a two-week window before or after um, any dental procedures. And if you have a history of cold sores, we like you to um, use a medication prophylactically like Valtrex, and we can help you out with prescribing that. It's not that injections would give you a cold sore. It's just that if you've had a cold sore in the past, who knows um, what will trigger a cold sore. And sometimes the stress of a needle can cause that. So we are happy to help you um, have a prophylactic um, treatment for that. Okay. Um, so can fillers uh, be used to help under in, in, in the neck? Um, they actually can. We do a treatment called necklace line filler. Uh, we use very fine fillers like um, a Bellatero Balance or Restylane and Refine, and we actually inject in the lines of the neck. This is called Technic. It's from all of us looking down, and some of us are more predisposed than others. Pre-treatment for this might look like using your retinol and your vitamin C, your, your medical grade skincare down on the neck. Also, microneedling helps kind of prepare the canvas, but ultimately, if there's a deficit and the tissue needs to pop, be popped up, we've had great success with using filler in the neck, and typically, this takes about one syringe of filler, okay? If you have lines in your upper lip um, softened, will it give you a funky pucker? pucker? Great question, too. We've seen a lot of duck lips and overdone lips, so lines above the lip are they're just really hard to treat. And so we usually we throw a lot of different things to curate a, a natural result. That will include some medical grade skincare. It will likely include microneedling or laser treatment to help soften the tissue and um, kind of correct some of that fine lines and stimulate collagen production. Um, I also really like using wrinkle relaxer above the lip, not enough to, to um, change your smile, but enough to soften the muscle that acts like a purse string. Then finally, we like to use a soft filler, uh, like a Wrestle and Refine or Kiss, I have found to be most helpful because these are like, it's like honey on a biscuit. It's It just melds in, looks very natural. So it will not affect your pucker or give you a funky lip. It shouldn't make you look like a bunny rabbit. If you try to correct perioral lines with just filler, you will end up looking overfilled just it takes too much filler to do it. So it's that multifactorial approach that really gives you like a pretty, a pretty um, result. The fine lines will take a lot of time to, to resolve and may not ever completely resolve. But with that curated, appro curated approach, we've had um, a lot of success with patients. Um, okay, so Ashley just kind of touched on this question from, from Debbie, and this is probably a question worth talking about out loud. So the fear of having huge lips, 
I'd say that is one of the biggest barriers to having um, lip filler treatment. And I understand it because nobody wants to look done or have huge lips. You know, you hear Russian doll lips or, you know, these huge filters that are placed on Instagram and you just look done. So I am excited that our team really has the skill and the, the platform and the products available to be able to give a simply hydrated lip. And sometimes I will actually even describe lip filler as lip hydration because, um, we don't want your lips looking done, okay? Especially if you don't want your lips looking done. Um, and we're able to achieve that. We've got a bunch of people on our staff that have actually feel the same way and have allowed us to treat them with filler. So, and I, I routinely pull them into the room for patients to see an actual patient who has had their lips injected but doesn't look done. So these are the people walking by you on the street that look hydrated and fresh and you would never think they had had filler and they probably wouldn't tell you they had filler, but they've had filler done. So um, thin lips are, are common. We all have some involution with age. And so if it's a simple hydration, that may be a half syringe of filler to kind of restore. If you just do have a thin upper lip genetically and you actually do want to build a lip, we'll um, usually recommend Serial injection, so maybe a half syringe of filler at a time. And Ashley can speak to that more in the comments too. She does that all the time. Um, and that gives you a natural, subtle lift and um, plump over time that isn't really obvious. But more than not being obvious, it's it's it um, really respects the natural anatomy of your own lip and face. So some girls do have a very thin lip and they want a very full lip and that is okay. We're just going to take our time getting you there. So if you put a whole syringe of this in a thin lip, it's going to look like a hot dog in a microwave and it's not going to look cute. But if you generally build it, gradually build it over time, it looks really pretty and more natural and, and the result is definitely better. Okay. All right, so we answered a ton of questions here tonight. We are going to be closing up here in just a few minutes. I want to know what questions that I didn't get to or if you leave this webinar and you'd be disappointed if you didn't get the answer. So I'm going to ask you guys to hit up the questions right here, um, and I will close out with that. So while you guys are typing your questions, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy evening to join us tonight. I know we've got some great little um motivation to be here because we've got some really awesome giveaways offered by the office. So we're thankful for that too. And that'll be announced later. You can just stay tuned to our social media platform to hear more about that. Our All That Glows event is closing out um, in the next 48 hours. And we do have specials on fillers. Really, we've got a, a great array of, of specials on several items. So if you are wondering about what special might fit your need, all you need to do is call the office. You can message any of us. You can message us on, on social media as well, and we will get those questions answered. We're able to offer those specials virtually to you, so that's really, really awesome. Um, but really, um, want you to know that we're here for you. We're here for your goals, whether they're big, whether they're small, whether it's a quick pick up or whether it's kind of a year long plan, we can totally facilitate that planning and service for you. Um, Don, our phones went crazy today. So you can absolutely, if you have left a message with us, you will get a call back and we will honor the timing of your call for all that glows. I know we're kind of down to the, down to the finish line here. So um, if you're leaving a message um, and reach out, don't worry, we will be getting back to you ASAP. We're working overtime to do that. Um, Debbie asked the question if, that she noticed when she wears a mask, it doesn't matter if it's paper or cloth, um, she gets red patches on her cheeks and lips, and it eventually goes away. Um, it starts to itch after time. This is um, a super common question. Um, moisturizing more would be my first my first um, suggestion to you, also a paper mask. Honestly, at the end of the day, these masks just simply cause congestion. So I don't think we can get away from the effects of them entirely. I would say buy yourself a hundred pack of disposable masks for yourself and your children. Um, and we can talk about using um, like some hydrocortisone if you come in the office and do a face-to-face -face eval, or you can do an over-the-counter. Definitely using a good moisturizer is great. Some of us get a little more sensitive 
like you do, Debbie, um, some of us get a little more congested. And if you're on the congestion side, we have some oil control pads that are really helpful. I've been giving them to the teens in my life as well, um, just to strum over your face, making sure that we exfoliate. So come on in or we can do a FaceTime and talk about some more specific treatments. But our triple lipid is a crowd favorite as well as our trio for a nice moisturizing treatment. And then our oil control pads for helping with acne. Yes, pain with filler. Good question. So yes and no. With most beauty routines, there is a little discomfort, but I wouldn't say it's terrible at all. Um, when you come in for filler, we use a topical numbing uh, treatment if you would like. Also, we can ice and we have some distraction tools, but I will say there is lidocaine in this product. So once we get started, our injectors are really kind of low and slow with their with their treatments. And so, and we tend to talk a lot and we'll give you something to hold and touch and we have things to look at. So all of those things are great distractors. So it feels like a little pinch. The lips are definitely the most sensitive. They're pink and sensitive for a reason. We have the most nerve endings there, but that's also where we tend to use the most numbing medication. And that's, that's placed on topically. Um, and we let it sit for a little bit and then your experience is really comfortable. After injections, there's not a lot of pain. Typically mid face injections can feel a little tender the next day. Definitely everything feels a little swollen. Uh, using Zyrtec can help or an antihistamine to help with that swelling. But generally lips are not super painful. A bruise is possible. And of course with any bruise, there's a little tenderness, but beyond tenderness and some slight swelling uh, that should, is all you should expect after filler. And if you have more than that, we would want to hear from you to talk through how to how to manage those symptoms. Okay. I wish I was bilingual. <laughs> Dr. Alfonso is bilingual. That is an awesome, awesome feature we here have, have here at the office. So if you speak Spanish, request Dr. Alfonso. He'd love to speak Spanish to you. Um, okay. Um Before, before to mitigate bruising, before injections, I'd say the most popular supplement that we uh, suggest is called Arnica. This is a natural supplement you can find here at the office or at any health food store. It does not completely mitigate the risk of a bruise, but it helps minimize downtime. Some other tips and tricks would be to um, stop taking non-steroidals like Advil or Motrin before an injection. Instead, if you had a headache, you could take Tylenol. That's just because... Um, NSAIDs increase a bleeding time. Okay, if you take an aspirin a day and that's part of your health regimen and it's not optional for you, that's okay. Do not stop it, but do mention it to us and we'll take some extra steps um, for you during your injection practice. Um, fish oil, turmeric, vitamin E, these things are all blood thinning medications too. So if they are an optional part of your regimen, I would discontinue them about seven days before your treatment. Okay. Um, our allthatglowsgr.com website is still live, um, and you guys can go online to purchase, or you, like I said, you can call us, and if you get a, that call into us, we will honor the timing of your call. All right, so thank you guys for joining us tonight. I hope you learned something new about injections. Understanding that there's a difference between a wrinkle relaxer and a filler is big, okay? Wrinkle relaxers basically put muscles in a timeout. And so the lines caused from muscle movement, like crow's feet lines or lines to the forehead are really the target there. Fillers simply fill. So we will fill fine lines caused um, from those, those dynamic wrinkles with fillers, but more often we're restoring volume and putting things back where they belong with filler. Um, the most common areas we like to treat with filler would be mid-face, um, lip, and then if we need to do any tuning up as name of nasolabial fold marionette lines, certainly. But some really fun areas that we love to treat with filler would be jawline, temples, um, the smokers lines, and under eye filler. So we get really creative with filler, and it's definitely more of a ongoing conversation as far as filler. So both are excellent, especially when done tastefully and with the correct product. And this group of injectors is excellent and can you can totally trust them with their technique and suggestion. So please reach out to us if you have any other questions. I want to thank every single one of you guys for taking your time, tuning in. And thanks, Ashley, for answering those questions for us while we were live online. For all of you guys that were tuning in that are patients here, 
Thanks again. And for those of you that are new, um, we hope to meet you soon. Have a great night, you guys. We'll talk to you soon.